Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Shooting Answers. Throughout the years, I had so many questions from uh, people that are following me on my social medias or just uh, when I met these people on, on an art festival. And uh, throughout the years, I collected those questions and uh, I'm going to try to give some answers and uh, let's let's see what the first one of the day is and uh, let's see what I what kind of suggestion or answer I can give you when you photograph well-known landscapes do you seek to discover new angles that have not been photographed yet ooh tough question uh, well let's let's say that 2024 Everybody's a photographer. <laughs> 2024, everybody has a source of camera. Can be a phone, can be an iPad, can be an, a regular tab tablet, or can be a camera. Which means that it's going to be harder and harder to find something that has not been photographed yet. Said that, so I can tell you that... The way that I photograph, it's def definitely different than the way that you photograph. So even if we go in the same place, my eyes are going to see a landscape or a location or a place or an object in a different way that you will see it. So, yes, for sure, I'm going to try to find a different angle, but I can say... Ooh, this is an angle that has never been photographed before. I can say, ooh, I really like this angle. And because I do it maybe in a different way setting-wise, I can say, I like this angle. I like this perspective. But we will never know if somebody ever took the same picture or not. The weather always change. The settings can be changed. So it's hard to say, did this angle with this kind of light, with these kind of settings ever been photographed before? It's hard to say yes or no, but I can tell you, I like to shoot in my way. That doesn't mean it's the right way, but it means that it's my way. Somebody likes pictures darker. Somebody likes pictures a little bit brighter. Somebody likes vertical pictures. Somebody likes portrait pictures. So no matter where I go, yes, I try to make some researches on Google, following other photographers. What did they do? What kind of lens they used? But then once I'm there, I'm using what I have. I'm using what I think is the right lens to do. I use the settings that I think are right for that kind of environment, that kind of light, that kind of weather. And I try to, to make mine in that specific shot something that, again, somebody for sure already photographed it. All right, let's see what is the second question. Ooh, the biggest lesson you have learned. That's a tough one. Did I learn any lesson? For sure. Um, I will say that I know it sounds like a quote, but never give up. It's definitely a lesson that I learned through through many years of doors slammed, no, we prefer another photographer or simply we don't like your pictures enough for this project or that project. Um, what I've learned is I got to like what I do first. So the day that I will think, oh my God, I got to 
I have to take that picture is not going to look as good as the day that I will say, oh, I can't wait to take that picture. So that kind of excitement supposed to be trans um, moved into your picture. Um, I need to like what I do. And so I try not just to have fun everything on everything I shoot, everything I do, but I try to, to find the good side of any assignment or anything that I want to try to photograph. Um, I learn for sure. Uh, I don't know if it's a lesson or not, but I learn for sure that even if a lot of people told me, will tell me, because it's a never-ending learning experience. If they will ever tell me, oh, this is not a good picture, I will not trash it. I will save it. I will try to learn from that no, what can I do to make that no a yes? Should I improve my equipment, lens or camera wise? Should I go in that specific place in a different time of year? Light will change, color, environment color will change. Or maybe I just think, hey, I really like that picture. I don't care if this person or that person said, no, we don't like it. Maybe I will just try to find another route with that picture where people will like it. So going back to the question, the biggest lesson I've learned, I've learned not to get demolished mind-wise when people tell me no. Because having some no, it's supposed to be a good push to do better, to get better, to take better pictures. So I've learned that I shouldn't just like, no, they said no, now I'm sad, which sometimes it's part of life to, to be sad for a slammed door in your face. But sometimes that's supposed to be not a door closing, but the beginning of a new door that might will open. Just because now I know this is not good enough. I got to do better. And um, so, yeah, learn on last, I'm sorry, <laughs> lesson learned. Um, never, never give up and definitely try to improve. Try to, to stay on focus and uh, never let anybody tell you you are not good enough. Maybe that picture is not good enough, but you are good enough and uh, just, just keep clicking. Question number three. Any interesting videos? Ooh. Actually, that's a question that if I had to answer a few years ago, I would say not at all. I think that COVID somehow changed my point of view. Well, look at me right now. I'm taking a video. And um, I am more interested interested than before. I believe it's a completely different word. So it's not just click rack in your camera. You need sometimes different lens lenses. You need specific and different software. Um, so it's a completely different job. I don't feel comfortable 100% to take videos. But at the same time, I'm intrigued because technology advanced so much. Right now, I'm taking a video with one, the my Canon 1DX Mark II, 24105 lens on it. A few years ago, it's not that I couldn't take a video. I wouldn't even think to take a video with a camera. So I'm interested because I see that we can go really far 
but photography it's definitely and still my field and uh, but yes uh, any interesting videos today more than yesterday yesterday more than two days ago and probably tomorrow even more interested all right last question of the day last question for this uh, episode of shooting answers let's see what is that when do you consider your picture the perfect shot Ooh, we kept the hardest question as the last of the day the perfect shot does it actually exist the perfect shot that's a question that I don't even know if we have an answer and I don't even know if we have time for an answer the perfect shot I wow I think that to to have a perfect shot you need to put together let's say in a bucket few things and only then you can start to consider if everything comes together maybe then we can start to consider the perfect shot and don't take me wrong my perfect shot doesn't mean that it's your perfect shot maybe you just don't like it maybe for you it's too dark maybe it's too bright um, or maybe it's just not the kind of picture you like so I believe that the question is more your picture your perfect shot um, I we were talking about the bucket let's put in the bucket I for sure think that I need to be in the right place at the right time and to do that it's not just being in the right place at the right time I think that you gotta study very well the location that you are gonna photograph you're gonna study very well the weather the light that it's supposed to be at the right place because you know if it's raining if you go to Africa if you go to Uganda and you pretend to get the right perfect shot September October when it's the raining season well you are not gonna get a pretty sunny picture probably so studying the location it's definitely the first thing to put in the bucket for the perfect shot I think that you need to know your camera very well you need to know how far you can go with your camera for example I was talking about that today I'm filming myself with the Canon 1DX Mark II before I had this camera I had Canon 7D Mark I and for three four even more years I thought I was the king of the world I thought that was the best camera ever and I shot in any light condition um, moving my ISO from 100 to 6400 which was the maximum that that camera will allow me to go and again I thought that that was the best I could get and then I studied I made some researches and I found out that 1DX Mark I, Mark II actually will allow me to go way further ISO wise some light conditions 6400 was not enough now I'm I'm talking very specific numbers if you want to know something more about the ISO you can uh, you can follow one of my other videos actually the the chapters that you can find on my YouTube channel it's what does it take to get the right shot and there is one specific video that I'm talking about the ISO so now I'm going more specific just because I tried to answer the question but if you need 
to know more about, if you want to know more about the ISO, you can follow that specific video. But anyway, when I learned that the 1DX series, Mark 1, Mark 2, and then Mark 3, um, actually will allow me to go way further, higher with my ISO, and I tried before I purchased it, I realized that, wow, 6400 ISO with the 7D, a lot of noise. 6400 with the camera that I'm filming right now, that I'm using to shoot right now. The noise was way, was way, way, way less. So, knowing how far your camera can go will help you to create the perfect shot. The perfect shot doesn't just happen. You gotta create it. So, being in the right time, in the right spot, which means make some research, studying where to go, when to go, what time of year, it's very important. Having the right equipment is very important. Knowing the right equipment is very important. Knowing what I do is very important. I think that studying it's today more important than ever. Because if I have the right camera, but I don't know how to use it, well, we are going nowhere. True digitals you can make mistakes you can look at your mistakes you can delete it and you can take another one changing here and there hoping to get a better shot but that's not the perfect shot that's a lucky shot so studying the location knowing my camera knowing my equipment not just the camera lenses as well Knowing where I'm going means let me bring with me the right lenses to try to capture the, right, the, the perfect shot. Knowing the camera, we said, knowing how far I can go. Can I resist 20 degrees below? Do I have the right uh, jacket? Do I have the right pants, the right socks? Do I have the right shoes? So everything put it together will make it easier to create the perfect shot last but not least you got to be lucky you can study as much as you want you can have the most expensive and best camera in the world you can you can study as much as you want you can be as good and as prepared as you think you can be you can have the perfect outfit to go 150 degrees or below 20 27 minus whatever but if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen you can stay there and waiting for the perfect shot because you know that the bear it's coming but if it's not coming it's not coming you can look for the perfect shot with the bald eagle that is gonna actually fish uh, the fish it's gonna fish it and he's gonna eat it in front of my camera I'm ready I'm there I'm I'm wearing my clothes I know my camera I have the perfect lens I know that the the, the eagle is right there on the tree he's gonna come down and catch the fish if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen so to create the perfect shot you need to be lucky you need the right time the right day the right spot the right corner the right camera the right lens the, the right skill like knowing what you're doing and if everything comes together probably you are starting to get something good picture wise is it the perfect shot I don't know until I got it for sure but we are getting closer and closer to get the perfect shot all right I think that for today is all I answer four 
of the many questions that you guys ask me throughout the years. Um, at this point, don't forget to subscribe on my channel. Follow me for another episode of uh, Shooting Answers. If you want to follow me on my other social media, it will be my pleasure uh, to see you uh, join me through my adventures. In the meanwhile, I wish you a wonderful day and I see you soon for a next episode.